Hi, Mark Heath here, and in this video, we're going to look at more links group adjacent method. And in one of my link challenges, which I occasionally post on my blog, I set the challenge of say you had this list of numbers, which represents how many sales you made each day. And you're interested in finding the longest sequence either of days in which a sale was made or the longest sequence of days in which a sale wasn't made. So here you can see that we've got five days without a sale here um, and we've got four days with a sale in a row here. So first of all, I'm just splitting this up so you just get a list of strings. Um, but then what we can do with group adjacent is say we're going, we want to break this up into groups of adjacent elements and we can pass in a lambda to define what um, is meant by adjacent. So here I'm actually creating a new key based on the value in the sequence. If it's a zero, I'm going to change that to n. And if it's anything else, I'm going to say y. So no sale or yes, there was a sale. And so what it will do is it will look at these first four. These will turn into y's. So it will group them together. Then this one will be an n. So it groups that on its own. Then two y's, two n's. Let me just run this part of the query for you to see. So here you can see key equals y, four items, key equals n, zero items, key equals y, two items, and so on. And so every time the key changes, we start a new group. And so this would allow me to just find the largest uh, sequence of either sales or not sales. But in my challenge, I wanted to find the longest sequence of days without a sale. So I also looked for where the key was n, and then I counted how many were in the group. So if I run this, I get the correct answer of five. Of course, you can do whatever you like in this key selector. So here I'm just doing the key selector on the number of sales itself. And so if I run this, we'll see that every time the number changes at all, we start a new group. So a group of one day where we made one sale, a group of one day where we made two sales, a group of two days where we made one sale and so on. And there's also a related method called segment, and it allows you to segment the incoming sequence into groups, just like you can with group adjacent, but you've got a bit more control over exactly what causes you to start a new group. So you get past in your Lambda function to segment, you get past the current item, the previous item and the index. And so here I'm, I'm just kind of doing something a little bit little bit obscure, I'm XORing if C and P, current and previous, are equal to zero. So if they're both zero, we won't start a new sequence. If they're both non-zero, we won't. But if one of them is zero and the other one isn't, we will start a new segment. So if we run this, we'll see that we actually end up with the same um, grouping using this technique. We've got a grouping of all of the days with the sale, then the days without the sale, and the days with the sale, and so on. Obviously, for this particular example, group adjacent is easier, but segment does allow you to implement some more interesting segmentations of your sequence, depending on your needs, if you want to take into account the current, previous, and index.